Hey guys, how you doing? So I wanted to give you a quick report on my experience training an AI to basically deliver an application. This is a custom GPT. So this application would uh, exist within the context of uh, OpenAI's framework, basically a web app, chat-based web app. And uh, so I wanted to compare it towards, compared to building an app using traditional methodologies, a traditional web app with JavaScript or PHP or something, but never Ruby. It's still early stages. I've been training this agent for about, I guess about two and a half months now, not full time. You know, just like 10 minutes every day. I keep adding prompts, keep building it. Now that AI has a memory, you can keep building it and building it and refining it and refining it. It's quite useful. It's like very, very useful. And I see massive amounts of use cases to me. This means uh, a lot of jobs there. Now, having a developer's background where I understand how to uh, architect information, if you will, is playing a significant role in me getting a better result. So uh, it's important that you do it properly. That said, this reminds me of something, uh, a truth about development in general. A big part of the job of development has nothing to do with writing code. I've been talking about this for years, in fact, way before AI. Big part of development is just uh, figuring out the use case, figuring out the business rules, if you will, how things are going to be implemented. Um, this is all very important. Yes, GPT and using AI is going to make you a lot more, a lot more productive. You're going to get a lot more done than you would uh, versus just traditional coding without the use of AI. So I encourage you to use AI. Again, let me say it again, this dooming thing that somehow AI is going to make all coders obsolete and everybody's just going to go to the AI and say, build me this app. No. Very simple things. Like you see occasionally they, they build like real simple games that nobody would ever use. Um, but when it comes to complexity, uh, you still need to be, to work at it, to understand how to uh, structure things. Developers are gonna become a little bit more higher level, they're gonna become a little bit more architectural uh, in their uh, processes. So you gotta learn that kind of stuff. Um, I'll get into that a little bit more in other videos. Again, when you wanna get into the meat of things, I was looking at like, I have my Studio Web app, which is a traditional web app, which uh, it's been around for, I guess the first version was 14 years ago, but. So it is a uh, Laravel-based app. We use Vue on the front end for some, some of the views. So it's a traditional web app, relational database backed. It's been used in school, schools for many, many years now. I've had, uh, over the years, at least a million students on it. So I was looking at how I could take Studio Web and see if I could uh, create a variant of it. I was going to see if I can create a variant of it using AI. And I'm not convinced. Uh, well, hold on a second. Let me see what's going on here. I was looking at playing around with uh, GPT to see how I could use it to produce a, a version of Studio Web using AI. And I can, but it would still require a deep knowledge of the use case, a deep understanding of the business rules, and that was a big part of the job. And uh, you would still have to do some traditional development, no question about it. Now, there's two ways you could approach it. You could approach it and say, okay, I'm going to use AI to write code to deliver a, a traditional app, you know, where you're using uh, Node.js or using React and using, you know, if you're gonna use React. And you use these technologies and, to, and HTML to deliver the skin and so forth. Or you can change your way of thinking and you can use uh, GPT or the equivalent and think about it in that regard. How can I explain this? So you could 
change some of the user experience so that you, you, you're not going down into code, but you're getting the job done. So, for example, instead of, like right now in Studio Web, if I have time, I'll, I'll overlay uh, an image of the, the main UI. So this is the main UI that students see. Now the app is far more comprehensive in terms of the backend tools for teachers. But this is what the students see. Um, now, if you modify that within a chat context, so everything is done within context. So instead of uh, having a video and then having the questions, you know, you pop, pop open to a question view, you got your hint buttons and so forth. I can see, I did a little experiment where you could do all this all within the context of a chat. So it changes the user experience. It's more like typing back and forth with the AI, uh, where the AI is using my data, all that data used to formulate the courses, all the, the, the videos and the quizzing and the hinting capabilities, et cetera. That's all integrated within the context of the AI, but it's all done within a chat window rather than a traditional UI like like we have on Studio Web. The question here, as a developer, is: Is this going to be engaging to the uh, to the viewer, to the student? Are they going to find this chat interface um, as effective as using the traditional interface? So there, that's two different approaches. So. Approach number one is using AI to speed up the whole coding process, which you should do, where in the end you've implemented your, 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 your full stack framework. You've implemented your front end framework if required. You put together a, a database and structured it and so forth. And then you built all your, you've written all your business rules as objects, with, you know, in your language of choice, JavaScript, Python, whatever, PHP. And then you deploy. So you're going to get the job done much faster. As I mentioned in other videos, I have seen people, I've, me, I have talked to people who they released a mobile app, native mobile app, and they said they got the work done in a couple of months, whereas prior to AI, it would have taken them, it would have taken them more than a year. So that's very good. So they're, the AI is executing code, is writing code, speeding up the whole process, but they're still having to write code. The key thing about that kind of development, which, which I think will be the majority of development for a while, is that you still need to know what you're doing. That's the, that's the funny thing. It's like people are like, oh my God, AI, you still need to know what you're doing. You, you can't tell the AI, um, okay, go refactor uh, those methods there, uh, see if you can optimize the, the threading model. It's like if you, you know, you think some random secretary is going to know anything about this? No. <laughs> so that's number one. Number two is to uh, is to reimagine how you deliver the app, and you deliver it within the context of a, of a chat window, a modal window. So that's very powerful. But again, is that is it as effective? Will it be accepted by the user as much as a traditional app where you got buttons and so forth? I don't know. Somebody experiment with. So what I'm doing now, let me zoom in for this one. Oh yeah, good old Sony. So what I'm doing now is I am experimenting with that. I am now producing a, uh, an, a not an agent, but a GPT, a custom GPT. I'm producing a custom AI to facilitate a certain process if that I'm going to expose to the public, uh, hopefully within the next month. Uh, it's a part-time thing. It's, it's an experiment for me to compare how that type of development versus traditional development and, and, and delivery of an app, and to see also how people respond to it, how people respond to this non-traditional approach, this AI approach uh, in terms of delivery versus traditional app approach. I'm, I'm going to be curious to see how you guys react to that as well. That's it. I hope you found this video useful. This is just, um, you know, I've been in development since the 90s. I've taken several products to market. Uh, I've invested in a few startups, done very well in some, not so well in others. <laughs> so I'm just sharing how I think about these things, given my uh, 
my uh, level of experience in the matter. If you're a little worried about the AI, don't be. I've seen uh, technology transitions happen a few times. And uh, this is no big deal. This has happened several times before, and it will happen again. And those who jump on the new trend, meaning those who adopt AI as quickly as possible uh, in your traditional development, in learning of new things, et cetera, and so forth, are going to do really, really well. You're going to do really, really well. Don't resist it because you're afraid of it. Embrace it. That's what happened in the 90s when uh, thick client development was basically Windows, really. When Windows development was dominant and then the web came about, there's a, you know, most developers prior to 1995, the vast, well, just about all of them were either writing a thick client for Windows or maybe some Unix stuff, some Linux stuff. But it was, it's mostly Windows developed, a lot of VB6, uh, you know, a lot of C, C++, uh, what's it called, DCOM, I think it was called, all that kind of stuff, you know, DLLs, I'm trying to remember, it's been so long. Anyway, people, that's how they wrote code. And when the web came about, that was a huge, huge departure from traditional development. So now it was not even close. So a lot of people were very resistant. resistant. I remember friends of mine who were engineers and they, oh, they hated the web. They hated the web <laughs> because it was uh, a lot clunkier at the time. And it was a lot more brittle and more difficult than actually traditional development in ways because you, you had to deal with the uh, stateless nature of the web. You had to deal with uh, the server-client relationship. You had to deal with uh, the browser wars, incompatibility. It was a big mess. But nonetheless, people like me who adopted it were able to get ahead of things and uh, do pretty good. I did pretty good. Uh, people have done much better than me, but I've done pretty good. And they're ahead of the game. So there you go. Embrace the new stuff. Get in it. It's a new type of development when people who... Those developers who don't embrace AI, whether you're developing the new app style like I discussed, or you're just using AI to speed up what you're currently doing by multiples, uh, those who embrace the new way are going to run circles around the people who are kind of stuck in the old school, and they're going to get all the jobs, they're going to get all the contracts, they're going to make all the money. That's what happened back in the day. Anyway, but the new guys, people, the Ligard will uh, they'll figure it out and they'll jump in anyway. So... Knowing how to code, knowing how to design systems, knowing how to communicate are very, very, very important in the AI age. No question about that.